please welcome to the stage Laurence Tubiana, CEO of the European Climate Foundation, France's climate change ambassador and special representative for COP21 and COP22 UN high-level champion for climate action, His Excellency Abdullah Mohammed Al-Basti, Secretary General of the Executive Council of Dubai, Mayor Eduardo Paes of Rio de Janeiro, Brazil, and Mayor Anne Hidalgo of Paris, France, in conversation with Francine Lacqua, anchor and editor-at-large for Bloomberg TV. Please, uh, I need to be up. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Well, thank you, everyone, for joining us. A lot has to be said from what has been achieved since Paris in 2015. So thank you all for being on this panel. Your Excellency, let me start with you. You've just announced, of course, this new climate action plan. What are you most excited about, and how will it define the way forward? Uh, thank you for hosting uh, me here, and thank you for being with us here in Dubai. Um, several mitigation plans have been... Is, is this working? I think we can hear you. I hope we can hear you. Yeah. We're not. Yeah. Have been implemented in, in, in Dubai. Uh, one of which is the carbon abatement strategy, where we aim to reduce the carbon emission by 50% by 2030, targeting uh, main sectors like energy, transportation, water, uh, waste. Uh, in addition, the, the circular economy also is another strategic initiative for us where we have a quick wins. Um, for example, uh, we were encouraging the, the, the use of filtered water to reduce plastic, uh, segregating at site to minimize waste and encouraging and encourage recycling locally. Um, and uh, recently we've announced the new policy to ban single use of plastic starting from uh, January 2024. Um, a few days ago, Emirates also uh, has become the way, Emirates Airlines has become the first world uh, airline that uh, operates A380 flight uh, using uh, 100 percent sustainable aviation uh, fuel, which is a breakthrough, and uh, that could can reduce uh, carbon emission by uh, up to 85 uh, when compared to conventional fuel jet. Uh, finally, I, I think in Dubai, uh, as any uh, other, uh, as the other cities, we have a long and short-term plan. We have a target. We have. We, we committed to invest in this uh, plan. Uh, we need to work together. I mean, putting everyone uh, in one room. I mean, private sectors, public sectors, community, um, uh, educational institutions. Um, I mean, to, to, to share the same vision uh, and agree in the coming years. Um, that's, I think, uh, that's what we have, and um, we do believe also, uh, as I mentioned maybe before the panel, um, in, uh, working in our kids' awareness, I mean, uh, raising the awareness of kids, very critical to the coming 10 to 20 years. They will take the lead. They will be in charge in these things. So we have to work from the beginning of their life to, to increase their awareness uh, and uh, uh, issues that uh, related to the climate change and, and environment. Thank you so much. And thank you also, of course, to, to being host. Mayor Hidalgo, I mean, sometimes we're frustrated with progress on how it's slow. But if we cast ourselves back, since the Climate Summit for Local Leaders in 2015, which you hosted in Paris, at the time, a hundred local and regional governments had committed to these ambitious 2030 targets. Today, more than a thousand of them. So what do you credit that success to? Well, first of all, allow me to uh, thank uh, the Secretary General of the United Nations and uh, the President of, of the COP28, Dr. Sultan, and Mike Bloomberg, because uh, we need this uh, commitment at this level 
uh, we mayor, we need that. And uh, today, I, I know that uh, we all know the rules and the objectives that what the Paris Agreement stand for. And uh, it is necessary to complete uh, it with a new financial mechanism. And on that matter, uh, what happened uh, yesterday night with the adoption of the loss and damage fund is a very, very good news for climate justice and for also the uh, local leaders, because we need it. But uh, the question now for me is uh, how do we accelerate and with who? Uh, cities take action. We know that, and my, my sisters, mayors, uh, before your fantastic, <laughs> fantastic women and leader uh, say this before. And uh, since uh, 2015, and we, we do a lot, we did a lot. We have worked, we transform ourselves. Just look at the result of the, all the cities of the C40 network. Um, in Paris, for example, we, we redu uh, reduce our carbon footprint by uh, 36% in 20 years. And we continue, but how? In Paris, for example, we accelerate to uh, phase out of fossil fuels by reducing our needs, of course, thanks to energy sobriety. We aim also for 100% renewable uh, energies by developing in Paris also new facilities such as solar, uh, geothermal, heat recovery also. Uh, we are la launching a, a massive environmental conversion of our building because we are a very old city and it is simply crucial to uh, launch this program. And we will go also on reducing uh, greenhouse gases emission and air pollution. Less car means less pollution. It's very simple. If you have uh, come recently in Paris, you know that. And uh, it's a real revolution, but uh, a very peaceful revolution, because the revolution we want is very peaceful. Uh, the environmental issues and the social issues are managing together. And it is also a problem in our democracies. Without cities, Paris agreement achievement is impossible. It's true. We need to say that. That is why they must be part of the global climate governance. Also in Europe, Europe is very committed, and thanks to the commissioner before, is very committed in uh, the, um, the, the climate change and to help the government, and it's very committed. But today, we don't know tomorrow what happened. And um, in Europe, we can strongly support the European values and uh, institution. In a time when democracy is in danger and our cities are at the forefront against populism. And let me just tell you what is uh, doing today the Spanish presidency in Europe. She's working alongside with the city of Barcelona. I, I know that my colleague from Barcelona is here in this room, but also with Milan and Paris on creating a city committee because we need to be part of the European governance. I think it's very important if we will, if we want to achieve the Paris agreement uh, target, we need to have the cities inside the room. What happened this morning and, and today with the delegation of uh, 12 mayors at, at the opening of the COP is a major step. And I want 
uh, one more thanks uh, presidency of the COP28 and uh, Mike Bloomberg. And I can say to all my colleagues, because I think we share that, from now on, let's make sure mayors remain in the room. Thank you, my friends. Thank you. Thank you so much, Mayor. Laurence, in 2015, you, you were really one of the key instrumental architects of the Paris Agreement. What do you think is needed now to go forward with the ambitions? <coughs> you, I can tell that today, in this uh, first time summit of local authorities, local action, for me, it's really uh, an, an extraordinary achievement because when we started Paris, we, we knew that we have to rely, of course, on government, but climate action is everywhere, across the board. And the idea is that you have to get to the energy and agency of citizens, so you have to, to, in a way, embark not only the government and the, you know, the, the representative, but people themselves. And that's why the local authorities, the local region, that was so important, and that the non-state actors are part of the Paris Agreement for the first time. They were recognized as actors, and Anne gathers them. Uh, we could not put everybody at the same place, but in the Mairie de Paris, you have them with a wonderful photo I remember very well. And so today, I think it's a natural and very welcome evolution of Paris Agreement. I'm telling every day, an agreement is not set in stone, you, it's a living organism. And this living organism now has to include more people, more actors, in a much more stronger way. In Paris, there were still separate bodies. The government on one side, the non-state actors on the other side. I think that the moment we change that. And that's why I'm so happy to be here, to have seen Michael Bloomberg and the president of the COP, together with Antonio Guterres, with the same line, saying, we have to move this uh, forward. And what, because what? When you know, when Paris Agreement said, we knew that I, I am in this climate thing since 30 years almost, which is really too long, but you see that you will have and face highs and low in national politics, that's evident. So there, the local authorities, the citizen, you know, are the force that can keep the things going. Just remember, when President Trump decided to withdraw from Paris Agreement, that was a wonderful relief to see that states, regions, cities say, no, we are still in. It was a wonderful innovation in governance to say, no, even if the federal government can decide, we don't go in the same line. We want to pursue the Paris objective. And this is saving the multilateral process in reality. So diplomacy of cities and region, that's super important. So in my view, at that stage, what is needed, and that's why I really recognize this wonderful initiative of Trump, and the beautiful name, by the way, very, very sort of, uh, funny, but light, but at the same time energetic name, that we have to have now for the next round. And we are in a very crucial moment, the global stock tech, we look what we have done and we look forward now. And by, by COP30, we'll have to design the travel, to design the roadmap, to deliver the objective of Paris even more, because we know we are lagging behind. So that's why we need the cities and the region together with the government to be accountable of this promise made in Paris. And that's why I think in this new cycle, and I see now a number of governments are now ready to come back with their cities and region and cities and to commit together. And in a way to be accountable to each other. That's why then the national policies has to offer the space, the support for the local authorities, including on finance, including on governance, including on the capacity to decide and really implement the, the roadmap that the citizen would have decided. And that's my final word. You cannot do that enormous transformation that we are aiming at without citizen deciding and shaping the future. You cannot have top-down decision. It will not work. You will have resistance, backlash. And why? Because there is an element, and Claudia 
said that very well uh, earlier, you need the equality element embedded into climate action. If not, we'll never get there. So that's why I'm relying on all of you to do that, and that's why I'm very happy today. Thank you so much. Mayor Pais, so you're president of the FNP, which is the largest network of mayors in Brazil. So how do you work with the federal government? And also, how do you get ready for COP30, which will be in Brazil? I mean, uh, first, it's uh, an amazing honor to be here. Uh, I just want to say, Claudia, that uh, I felt completely uh, happy and proud to be, you know, surrounded by uh, women mayors. So it's women in power uh, a lot. So it's a great honor. Uh, let, let, let me say, I mean, I, I, I always, when I'm in a meeting like that, I cannot uh, forget uh, when we were in Paris eight years ago. And uh, this shows a little bit. I was chair of C40. Uh, Hidalgo was uh, the mayor that was still the mayor, but was the mayor by that time, uh, hosting us uh, in Paris. And I cannot forget to say that we are talking about something that happened eight years ago, and uh, by the time there was a request by the organizations of mayors, C40s uh, was one of these organizations, that we should be uh, part formally of COPE, of the COPEs that were delivered uh, right after that. And I mean, every time I see national governments talking about climate change, they say, this is urgent. We need to deliver it now. So I think I'm grateful for the opportunity. I'm grateful to be here speaking in the official zone of COP28, but I think it took too long. I mean, we're talking about eight years. So the main issue here, and I'm going to get to the FNP, the, the, the networks of Brazilian mayors, but uh, we need to understand that the main issue that we're discussing, how can we finance these changes. I mean, everyone that came before me said, come on, we need money. By the end of the day, we have a saying in Brazil that says, poetry is money. I mean, by the end of the day, I'm not saying you, you did amazing poetry, but we mayors need money. We need the money to get things done. When you look at Brazil, uh, which is maybe the country that's suffering most from climate change, uh, we need money now for adaptation. We cannot wait another eight years that uh, this uh, institution or the head of states that are present here, uh, the MTB uh, uh, leaders that are here, chairmen that are here, they need to understand that we need that to move fast and get to the money uh, to, to the hands of the mayors and local governments. So uh, my impression when I look at uh, institutions like uh, the, the networks of Mayor Brazil, is that we are kind of giving a good example when we talk about President Lula. And just to finish, here are my, my thoughts. I think, and I always say that to Hidalgo, we have an amazing opportunity uh, with President Lula becoming G20 president today. I mean, President Lula is committed to, to sustainability, is committed to climate change, and has a way, that's how he worked in his last two terms as president of Brazil, I was mayor too. Uh, he always found a way to help to implement public policies, giving money to local governments, understanding that we are much more capable of delivering things than national governments. So let's not wait another eight years. I, probably me and Dago will not be mayors in eight years. Who knows? <laughs> Who knows? Who knows? But... <laughs> Uh, it will pay, take too long. I don't know what's going to happen, be, be happening until then. Well, thank you so much for a robust conversation. So onwards. Is that the word of advice? Yes. Onwards. Run.